first trimester, the fetus is best visualized with a transvaginal transducer of 5 to 7 MHz. The second and third trimester scans mostly employ the 3 to 5 MHz transabdominal transducer. If the pregnancy is greater than 20 weeks, it is not necessary for the patient to have a full bladder for transabdominal scanning. Discuss safety, the purpose of the examination, detection of birth defects, and the accuracy of the measurements with patients who undergo obstetric ultrasound. Because fetal anomalies can remain undetected even by the best ultrasonographer with the best equipment, the patient should never be given unequivocal assurance that the fetus is normal. However, the patient can be given answers to specific questions provided by the scan. Have the patient lie supine in a comfortable position with a pillow under her head for comfort. Liberally apply transducer gel to the mother's abdomen. First, briefly sweep the entire uterus to check for multiple gestations. Then confirm fetal viability by identifying fetal cardiac activity. Use slow, repeated passes to identify the fetal structures. To determine the fetal presenting part and orientation, begin the exam in the lower uterine segment with the transducer in the transverse plane. Determine the location of the fetal skull. The presence of the fetal skull in the lower uterine segment confirms a vertex presentation. To determine orientation, visualize the long axis of the fetal spine. After getting oriented to the fetal spine, you will be three-dimensionally oriented to the fetal position. Visualize fetal extremities or face to confirm position. Record all findings. Scan with the transducer in the sagittal position, slowly scanning from the lower uterine segment to the fundus. The placenta appears as hyperechoic tissue. Calcifications may be observed. If the placenta cannot be visualized, it may be located posteriorly, obscured by fetal parts. Note the position of the placenta. If the placenta is near the cervix, or placenta previa, this should be noted as well. Record all findings. Estimation and documentation of amniotic fluid volume is a standard of care during routine ultrasound examination. The AFI is a quantitative approach to estimating AFV. Other methods of estimating amniotic fluid volume are purely subjective assessments. Subjective assessments make it difficult to follow trends. Measurement of the maximum vertical pocket may be a useful alternative in some situations, such as multiple gestation pregnancies. Divide the uterine image into four quadrants measured on the maternal umbilicus. Hold the ultrasound transducer in a vertical alignment. Starting in one quadrant, identify the pocket of fluid with the largest vertical dimension. Measure the pocket size and record the findings. Take care to avoid including segments of the umbilical cord in the measurement. Coiled cord can fill the space and appear to be fluid. Repeat this procedure in each quadrant. When measuring the AFI, the transducer should always remain perpendicular to avoid measuring the same pocket twice. Find the deepest vertical pocket in each quadrant that does not include fetal limb or the umbilical cord. Sum the measurement values from all four quadrants. This total is your AFI. If the sum of the AFI is less than 8, perform the four quadrant evaluation three times and average the values. If there has been difficulty imaging the fetus, the amount of fluid is probably reduced.